In this episode, we are going to be continuing building our different API endpoints for full CRUD capability. I'm not entirely sure how long it's going to take, so we're just going to start and see how far we get in this video. Right now, our API is working, but it's pretty bare bones, so we're going to expand on it and make it better. Why am I up at 3 in the morning making videos? I don't know. So if you don't have this code exactly as is and you want to follow along exactly, I just did a commit called bit. I swear. If that cricket doesn't stop cricketing, I'm gonna punch it in its little cricket face. I'll just be like, pew, 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 pew. Anyways, run commit basic 404, and here is the URL. The first thing I wanted to try to explain is that the way we're doing this with a JSON response and an HTTP 404 does work. However, there's a more suggested way as you build out an API. So we're going to change the structure of our code a little bit here. At first it's going to be a little strange and you might be like, what value is this adding? But as we go on, you will see. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to put an at sign API view and inside of parentheses, we're going to put a list with get comma post comma and delete. So this is how we define an API that can take get, post, and delete requests. And we're using this API decorator. And this describes functionality for this function. So what we want to do is we want to import this. And we're going to import some other junk too. So we'll say from rest framework dot decorators import API view from rest framework dot response, import response, and from rest framework, no dot, import status. So these three things we're going to use throughout this code. So we can use response to do all of our different responses, whether it's a JSON response, a 404, or HTML even, which we're not using HTML, but you get the idea. The API view says which methods are allowed, and the status is going to give us a bunch of options for status codes. Right now on the front end, we built functionality to accept 404s. Currently it's not working because we changed our backend code and I just saved it, but we've coded the functionality for a 404, but we don't have any code for general errors, 500s or unauthorized errors or whatever it may be. And those are different status codes that we may want to return. That's what we're going to be using this status variable for. So you'll see that here in a moment. All right, so enough of the imports. We got the decorator saying which methods we can use. Now, instead of returning a JSON response, I just want to return a response. And that actually reminds me, this should be capital. Sorry about that. So the response is going to take the data and optionally, you can pass in a status. So status equal to status dot. And you can see all these different HTTP status codes that we can give back with our response. This was a 200, so we would just say HTTP underscore 200. But this is also the default, so it's not really necessary. So I'll just go ahead and delete that, but we're going to do something very similar for our other responses. To try it out, let's create a response here. We will say return response instead of raise. And inside of here, we can skip the first thing, which was the data and just do the status. So we'll say status is equal to status dot HTTP underscore 404. Saving this, let's check out our backend. We will visit a page that does not exist. We get this weird new look, which is fine. It's something Django REST framework has to make working with our API a lot easier. So we'll have the ability to get and delete data and post new data. And it'll give us the error message right here, HTTP 404 not found. Another benefit of having this page that Django REST framework gives us is we don't have to use external API testing tools like Postman as much. So we could try deleting any of our customers. So let's go to a customer that does exist, like customer three, and now we can delete this customer. But it's not going to work quite like you would expect. So we hit delete. But the data is still here and we can still visit this data without getting a 404. So just because that button appears doesn't mean that we've coded the functionality for these different buttons. These are basically just the UI for the behind the scenes functionality for the delete and post methods. So 
in our code, we actually haven't done anything with those methods. So if we wanted to, we could, for example, let's try building out this delete functionality. So if we get past this point, we know that the customer exists. So what we can do is we can check what HTTP method the client is using. If request.method is equal to get, then we're going to do what we already know, which is this right here. The alternative option, lf request.method is equal to delete. What are we gonna do? This one's actually super easy. We're just going to say data.delete and return a response. And this is where we can use another status code. So we could say status is equal to status.http and we're just going to use 204 no content. There's all kinds of different things you could do, but that's what I'm gonna go with. Now that we've had the delete functionality coded, we should be able to go click this button and delete one of our customers. So we'll hit delete. We get a 204 no content. And now when we visit the same URL, we get a 404. So it appears to be working. And if we had the same view for our entire customers list, we could see everything. So why don't we go and try and do that now? We will say API view. And in here, we're going to allow get. We're also going to allow post. So post is used to add data. It can also be used to edit data, which will be for down here. You may also see patch for this, but we'll stick with post for now until we decide we might need otherwise, but for now post should be fine. And we will return a response instead of a JSON response. Saving that, let's take a look at our page. We will go visit customers and now we see one and two. Let's go back into a specific customer, such as customer two. Let's talk about this post ability down here. This will be used to edit the data for a specific customer. So to code that, we can just check for the request method being post. If actually lf request.method is post, what are we gonna do? It's going to be kind of like line 23 here where we get the customer serializer, but with us updating data, we're actually gonna have to pass in another argument. So it'll look like this serializer is customer serializer. We get the data from the database. This is the element we want to refer to. And then the new data is going to be passed to a parameter called data. And this is going to come from request.data. Now they could just submit any kind of garbage. So we actually have to check to see if the serialization was valid. So if serializer dot is valid right here, and this is a function call. So if the serializer is valid, we will save it with serializer.save and that is a function call. Lastly, we can return a response, passing back the data, serializer.data. And we might want to surround that in a dictionary, kind of like what we did here. So let's just do that. We'll say customer is serializer.data. There we go, that'll be for consistency. Now the last thing is if serializer is valid as false, it will go down to line 33 and we can return any errors. So the way you do that is return response, serializer.errors and make sure I get everything spelled right, serializer.errors. Now this, I'm just gonna warn you, okay? It suggests error messages, it's not error messages, it's errors. And then we can say status is equal to status.http400, bad request. So something they sent us is bad. If you're new to backend development, there's a good chance you're watching this like, um, what exactly is going on? Just wanted to let you know that that is totally okay. This is really a front end course, so I'm going over the back end material quite quickly, which is exactly why I have a back end Python course, which goes over this in much more slower detail. As long as you have a pretty good idea of what's going on and you're able to get the code working, that's great. That's the start of your practice for backend development as well. So you'll get better over time. And it's not like I had this all memorized. I was referencing some of my other code and notes. So don't expect to ever be perfect. Let's go ahead and try this out, see if it works. So we'll go over here. And what you're gonna do is you're going to take not the outer customer, but just the object here, copy it, paste it. And this is going to be the body of the request and inside of here you can update it with new information so for example the name could now be chipotle which is 
ultimately a more superior place to buy tacos. I don't even like tacos, but I love Chipotle in general. So we're going to update that. And now the data that's returned says Chipotle and they are in the tacos industry. If you go back to all your customers, that persists. And there you go, that's how you're going to update data. Now down here, we also have a form. This is to add new data, not update data. So in this situation, it's going to be pretty much the same, but instead you're not going to have an ID. That's because you don't know what the ID is going to be. That's what the database does. It generates the ID for you. So let's talk about how we can implement that behavior because right now it's not going to work. If we go down here and define some object like so, let's come up with a new name, Burger King and they are in the burger industry. <laughs> I don't even know if you'd consider that like an industry, but doing this, it's not going to give us what we expect. Nothing happens. So this behavior is going to be defined in this function because adding a new element refers to the entire list. We're adding an element to this list. We're not editing a single element, which would be customer singular. So let's define it up here. And it's going to be pretty similar where we can check what their method is. So if you want to give it a shot, you can pause the video and try it. Pretty much what we'll do is we'll just surround what we have in if request.method is equal to get. So if it is, we will get the data, serialize, and return. However, if the request.method is equal to post, then we're gonna do something a little different. And this line is going to be a lot more similar to what we have down here, where we are getting the data from the request. The only difference is we're not going to refer to something that already exists in the database. So I'm gonna copy this line since it's going to be really similar. We're just going to make one small change. So paste, and I'm going to remove this first data, which is the data from the database. So it's a little confusing with the naming, but once you kind of follow that pattern, you will start to understand. So there's kind of three ways we've done this so far. The first with just data passed in directly. This is getting data from the information. The second where we pass data in directly and to a named parameter, the name parameter data is expecting the request data, what's being updated. And then finally the third version where we drop what we want from the database and we're just giving new data. So yeah, maybe a bad choice of naming with naming this variable data. If you wanted, you could call it like DB data or something if that helps. Next up, we just check to see if the serializer is valid. So serializer dot is valid. If it is, we will say serializer dot save. And then we will return a response. The response is going to contain the new data, serializer dot data. Similarly, we're going to surround this in the dictionary with the key called customer. So customer. And next thing is going to be the status. So the status will be status dot. There's one for created, which is nice, 201 created. Now, if serializer is not valid, it will continue down to line 20 and we can return response, pass in any serializer dot errors and a new status which will be status.http400. So something they sent us is incorrect. So very, very similar to updating data. The only real difference is not grabbing something in the database already, which is why this is a little bit different. So let's test that out. We'll go down here, put a new object, and this is going to have, the tab doesn't work, which is annoying. Name, Burger King, industry, burgers. Let's try this. Hit post. And it created a new customer with the ID for Burger King Burgers. Awesome. Now when we go back to all of our customers, we should see that in our list. ID 3 has been skipped because that referred to a previous one we deleted. So at this point, you have all the essential API endpoints for full CRUD. Create, read, update, and delete. In the next episode, we're going to start working on the front end. This was kind of like a prerequisite to that. So I know it was a lot and especially a little bit different than what this course is about, which is React.
but this is kind of an essential thing to understand. And the reality is I'm trying to bring my content more to like full stack development versus just an individual technology where you learn everything in isolation. So hopefully you guys like that and it helps give some more context of how things might actually be used. Thank you so much for watching and sticking through this really long episode and we'll see you in the next one. Please be sure to subscribe. Peace out.